Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Friday Night Live. Um, we'll just have a little sit down here and just wait for a few people to join. And I hope everyone's had a nice day in the sun. It's been very hot today, 37 degrees here, and way too hot to do anything other than sleep. You'll all be pleased to hear that I've got a new chair, which moves around without squeaking on the floor, so that's a good thing. So we're here today, this evening, to talk about saddle slip and about the saddles that slip. Um, it's quite an important topic. Um, it's something that as saddle fitters we see an awful lot of, and it's also something that there's probably more to it than people realize. Saddle slips are very common, um, especially at this time of year, I find the sources are putting on weight, because saddle slippage is seen, maybe quite obviously, more so in the more rotund, barrel-like horses. And that's kind of understandable when you look at a horse from the back and it's shaped like a barrel. There's really nothing on the horse's back to tell the saddle where to sit. So there's nothing really to kind of hold onto the saddle. No spine sitting up inside the saddle. So saddles do slip more easily on those types. And it is that time of year where more horses are a little bit more rotund. So I thought it might be a good time now to do a little talk about saddle slippage. So we'll wait for a few more people to join us. Um, you can ask questions at any point. So if you ask questions, I'll pop up on my screen just here and I'll answer them if I can. Um, right, let's get into this. No, oh, someone's put the sound is really weird. I hope not. I've had to go out today and buy a whole new Wi-Fi thing because our Wi-Fi is so bad living in the country. Um, let me know if it is really bad and I can always restart it. Um, Right, let's look at some of these comments. So I've just put a little thing on the bottom play saying, please um, ask as many questions as you can as we're going along. Okay, someone said, sounds good. That's good. Thank you, Leanne, sounds good. So first of all, let's talk about saddle slippage and what it is, because there's quite a few different types of saddle slip. Um, and people often just sort of say my saddle slips and they don't really kind of specify what type of slippage it is. So saddle slip is defined as a saddle that moves basically from one side or the other. So the type of saddle slip that, that we're talking about really today is like when saddles tend to go one way more than the other. Because you do get on the very barrel like pony sometimes a bit of slippage each way. You can even get quite sort of, sounds a bit gross, but quite baggy skinned horses who the skin moves quite a lot and the saddle moves with it. But today we're talking about saddle slip in the in the context of saddles that, you know, you're, you're constantly being told to put your weight in your left stirrup, put your weight in your left stirrup, that kind of slip where it always goes one way. So that's kind of saddle slippage. And that's what we're talking about today. It is very common. Well, not very common, but it is not unheard of. We do see a fair amount of it as saddle fitters. There's loads of things that we can do with it. And we'll get into that um, later on. Historically, people have thought that the reasons for saddle slipping are a wonky horse or a wonky rider. Um, so often people say, oh, my saddle slips because my horse has got one shoulder bigger than the other, for example. And yes, that can affect it. Or people say, oh, my, my saddle slips because I've got one leg longer than the other. Very few riders actually genuinely have one leg longer than the other, but people often think they're maybe more wonky than they are. And so for many years, we sort of thought, oh, wonky horse, wonky rider, um, wonky saddle, people often worry that their saddle itself is wonky. So we get called out to check the saddles quite a lot. Um, more recently as well, we've been thinking about like the role that stirrup leathers play in it, for example, the amount of times that I check somebody's stirrup leathers and they're really wonky, that's not gonna help your saddle stay straight. Again, especially if you're on a very barrel-like horse and one leg is longer than the other because your stirrup leather is longer than the other. And as a slight aside here, if you do feel like you're an uneven rider yourself, please don't be tempted to make your stirrup leathers uneven without asking your saddle fitter first, because a lot of people take it upon themselves. They think, oh, I'm tighter through my left leg, so I'll loosen my right leg. But actually, then you're automatically sitting yourself off wonkily. So without your saddle fitter telling you to do so, keep your stirrup leathers as even as you can. And remember that just because they're both on hole number 12 doesn't mean that they're even. So the best way to check it, and I've done a video and I can put the link in if you want, the best way to check your stirrup leathers is to take them off the saddle, put your feet in the stirrups and hold the buckles and check that the buckles are even because hole 12 and hole 12 doesn't really mean much when leathers are made of skin and skin stretches. 
as I always say to my clients, I think of myself when I was pregnant and my skin stretched from a normal size stomach to one that looked like I'd eaten an elephant and back again. So skin has got a load of stretch in it. Stirrup leathers are made of leather, leather is skin. So always check your stirrup leathers, swap them around all the time. That won't help your saddle slip. But again, as well, more recently, we've also been thinking about girths and the role that girths play. So we're all very into girths at the moment with the anatomical girths and the forward curved girths and everything. But actually one thing that's a real problem in the terms of saddle slipping is one-sided elastic girths. So if your girth has got elastic on one side and not the other, so say for example, and this is probably my left hand on the camera, but it's my right hand in real life. So say for example, your right hand side of your girth has got elastic and the left hand hasn't, and you pull that way, you've got some stretch going this way because your elastic stretches, and then you pull this way and you've got no stretch. So you're automatically setting yourself off unevenly before you've even done anything by having elastic on one side. So please, if you've got elastic on one side of your girth and not the other, treat yourself and your horse to a new girth with either elastic on both sides, but make sure it's good quality elastic and quite thick and quite not too much stretch to it, or a non-elasticated girth. Either or, they're fine. But either is better than one with elastic on one side. Um, so yeah, so previously we've thought about wonky horse, wonky saddle, wonky rider, wonky stirrup leathers, wonky girth. But there has also been an awful lot of research done recently about the role that the horse's hind limbs play in saddle slippage. So I'm going to pop a little picture on here if I can work out how to do it. Bear with, oh, there we go, like that. Um, so this lady here, I hope you can see this. Oh, cancel. This lady here, I hope you can see this here, um, her saddle, now, her saddle slips off to the right. Um, so she's a lady that I went out to a couple of weeks ago and she said that her saddle had suddenly started going to the right. So um, she worried very much it was a saddle because it hadn't happened before. She's had the horse for a bazillion years. She's not wonky, the horse isn't wonky and suddenly the saddle in her lesson started going to the right. So I went out to her and I have to admit that we both were very concerned that maybe it was a saddle, something had happened to the tree. So I brought the saddle back, I completely stripped it, looked inside of it no problem whatsoever in the tree. So we look at the panels and the panels down the right side were a bit flatter, but is that a chicken or the egg? Have she made them flatter by going to the right? So anyway, it turns out that she said that it didn't happen in her GP saddle. So because it happened in her dressage and not her GP, we thought saddle in, um, initially. Anyway, this is her GP saddle on this photo here. So it was happening in her GP saddle and she just wasn't aware of it. So we think actually with her, Perhaps it's something going on in the horse's hind limb. Oh, it's not even showing on here. How annoying is that? Hang on. Let me try and work it out. Hmm. That's a stream. No. No. Let me try. Share screen. This is very complicated. Here we go, here's the lady. So you can see in this picture, she's going right. Um, so this is her in her GP saddle. She didn't think her GP saddle was slipping because it wasn't going as badly as her dress size saddle. But actually, as you can see from that photo there, she's most definitely going off to the right in it. So she's somebody that we have um, done a vet referral for to speak to the vet, because that brings us to what we're gonna talk about today and that is some research that's been done by Sue Dyson and a lady called Greaves, or Greaves and Dyson from the Animal Health Trust in Newmarket. So they've basically done a lot of research where they got loads and loads of horses together and they looked into saddle slippage and they found that over, so they had hundreds of horses in the study and they were looking at whether there's a, a link between hind limb lameness and saddle slippage. Now, first of all, please don't panic if your saddle slips and you're hearing the word lameness come from me because lameness, it, it really doesn't mean your horse is lame and broken and its legs fallen off. It, you know, it can mean the most subtle of differences in the terms of how its hind limbs move. And when you think of humans and how many humans are truly even, not very many. So don't panic when I say lame, it's just the words that they used in the study. So they had hundreds of horses and over half the horses that the vets picked up that had a bit of hind limb lameness, um, the saddle slipped. 
Um, so they thought that perhaps there's a real link between hind, le hind limb lameness and saddle slippage. So they did loads of research into it and they found loads of really interesting stuff. For example, over half the horses with the lameness, their saddle slipped. The saddles tended to slip to the weaker leg. So the leg that was lame, the saddle tended to slip to. They also found it was worse, interestingly, with a lighter rider. So they put two different riders on the horse and it was worse. The saddle slippage was worse with the lighter rider. It was worse when going on a circle, but that's quite self-explanatory really because a horse moves a bit differently on a circle. Um, and it was worse in rising trot than in sitting trot, which I think is quite interesting. And there was no relationship with the severity of the slip and the, with the severity of the lameness and the severity of the slip. So a horse that was like one tenth lame the saddle slipped as bad as a horse that was 10 tenths lame. So there was no kind of relationship with the slippage and the lameness. Um, oh, hang on, everyone's saying. <laughs> yeah, can only see my Google. I think I've sorted it out now. Um, this is a problem with lives, you see, it all goes a bit crazy. And then we live in the middle of nowhere and we have no Wi Fi. And I've had to buy a box that's dangling out of my window currently to try and get some Wi Fi. But yeah. Um, so, so now we've now there's other things brought into the mix. There's now wonky horse, wonky rider, wonky girth, wonky stirrup levers, wonky saddle, hind limb unsoundness. And it does look with all the research that they've done that the hind limb unsoundness actually plays a much bigger role than all of the others put together. So, what does your saddle fitter do when your saddle is slipping? There are a few things that we can do. If it's a temporary thing, sometimes you'll find we'll put shims under the side that it moves to. Interestingly, sometimes you'll find you also put shims on the side it doesn't move to, the other side, because um, that depends on why it's moving. Is it moving because the shoulder is lifting it and pushing it, or is it moving because something's dipping away? So each of those things require a different treatment. There's also something on a saddle, and I have one here, called a balance strap. Can you see the strap at the back here? So this is an extra strap. So this saddle's got a ton of straps on it. Let's ignore this front one because that's not relevant today. Um, so there are your normal three straps here. One, two, three. And then that here is the balance strap. So this strap here stops it from being able to twist around. So if your saddle is slipping like, like the back end is going like that, so it goes like that, then this balance strap here on this side will help it anchor it around. Now, this is something that your saddle fitter obviously has to do. Don't do it yourself um, because sometimes using the balance strap can make the problem worse. Sometimes it can make it better. But that is one of the things. And that is what these balance straps tend to be on the saddles for. And you'll offer this one here, for example, is a cob saddle. Can you see how wide and flat it is? So the cob saddles, obviously, things slip a little bit more. So they're much more common on the cob saddles. These point, these, that's a point strap. And this is a balance strap um, because they do tend to slip a little bit more on the cob types. So... Balance strap is one thing that we can do. If it's a wonky horse, um, we can shim it out. And then if it's going to be a long-term problem now, we can flock it. So we can we can now flock unevenly. So we didn't used to do it because we used to sort of think that shims were better, but now actually flocking unevenly on a long-term problem is something that we can do. Wonky rider, similar things really. Um, if the rider is taking off, sometimes that balance strap can help with that. Sometimes you can get... Um, like you can put like a seat saver with like a shim underneath the seat saver. So you're lifting the rider's bottom up. But very, very, very rarely do I think personally that it's the rider that takes a saddle. Um, wonky leathers, what we're going to do about that, change our leathers, obviously. And we're going to get non-stretch ones because they're so much better. And although they're called non-stretch, they're kind of slightly less stretched. They still can stretch a little bit, but they are significantly less stretchy than a plain leather one. Wonky girth. We're going to get ourselves a double-sided elastic or a no-sided elastic. We're not going to get a one-sided elastic. Um, so, yeah, let me have a look at some questions. Everyone's saying about having little fat ponies. Oh, gosh. So, Sandy. Had my saddle fitted twice since November by two different saddle fitters. Both say it's a good fit, and I'm sure it is. But it slips from one side to the other when I'm riding in it. She's 14 one cob, girth on both point straps, extra flocking put in on last check, which was better to start with, but now slipping again. So um, a few points in here. Both your saddle fitters say it's a good fit. Listen to your saddle fitter. As long as they're qualified and they're good, then listen to them. A, a, a badly 
a slipping saddle, so so a badly fitted saddle might slip more than a, than a well-fitting saddle, but a slipping saddle does not mean the saddle doesn't fit. So your saddle could very easily fit sandy and still slip. Um, again, like you know, like Sue Dyson found in that experiment. But yeah, so you've put here as well, she's 41, girth is on both point straps. Point strap doesn't stop side to side slippage. Point strap is, don't let me hide your thing. Point strap is the front strap here there and that actually helps anchor it down at the front and stop it from moving forward by anchor it down at the front sometimes she does it does create a little bit of back slip so it might be worth speaking to your saddle fitter again just over the phone and just ask if it's maybe worth thinking about using different girth straps i'm sure they'll be happy to help over the phone i know that i certainly am and again 14 one cob cob there's nothing on a cob's back to tell a saddle where to sit. You know when you go to school, I mean pony club, and you learn how to put a saddle on and you put it on the horse's back and they say, right now, just sort of shoogle it back until you find this natural place. Well, on a cob, actually the shoulders and the bum and the midpoints are kind of the same shape. So there's nowhere really on the horse's back to tell the saddle where to fit. So therefore we're reliant on the girthing, the strapping, the rider and the horse all being very even to tell the, the saddle where to sit, to stop it from slipping. Cobs. Um, Michelle says, what are your thoughts on the trend for saddle pads? For example, like one you can apparently put eggs under and hit with a hammer or generally they need for any sort of gel, sheepskin, half pads. Now, anyone that's watched any of my lives before will know that I say, please, for the love of God, don't put a gel pad directly onto your horse's back. So a lot of people use them as a non-slip pad. Um, and if you're watching this thing about saddle slippage, it might be something that you're considering doing or something that you're already doing, but please don't. So those gel pads shouldn't go directly onto horses backs because they really 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 do cause discomfort um if you look at them closely they are and i'm talking about the gel pads that are like like a sheet of gel and they've got lots of little holes in and if you look at them closely and you squish them down as the holes squish they kind of dilate and then they sort of suck back up and we see so many horses with like little white bits on their backs where the gel has kind of sucked up and and like cause problems on their backs. Also, if you think about it, um, it's like sticking something to your back. So like, imagine you were really hairy and someone stuck something to you and then rode you and it kind of jiggled up and down. It would it would really aggravate the hairs and it, it's not a very comfortable feeling. So gel pads are fantastic in the right place, which is between the saddle and the saddle pad, not directly on the horse's back. Um, they are Again, so these half pads, again, used to be sort of frowned upon a little bit by saddle fitters, but now there's so much research done and there's so many more ways of testing pressure points. We have these pressure map testing and everything, and they're brilliant. And we've now actually discovered that half pads and gel pads can, in some cases, be a really good thing. I certainly know of quite a few horses that I saddle fit for and their saddles fit beautifully, but actually they quite like having a gel pad, especially for like days like hunting, you know, when you're in the saddle a lot and you're about, you know, jumping hedges, landing heavily in the saddle, they do act as a shock absorber in some cases. Um, these ones about eggs, ones you can put eggs under and hit with a hammer, I've not seen them personally in action being hit with a hammer and an egg, um, but I do know that a lot of people are using the VIP pads and I think that's one of their marketing things. And I've never used one myself. I don't recommend them as such because I'll ne never say to someone you need a gel pad, but I do know a lot of people that use them successfully and they're no longer frowned upon in the way that they used to be. Um, my daughter, can't wait. Num number one fan, my 10 year old daughter. Um, sound quality is weird, my sounds good. What can you do? What can you do to help a saddle slip to one side on a green pony that's round and flat? So, hi Hayley. So a green pony, um, can sometimes cause saddle slippers just by the fact that they're green. If you think of like you've got a young green pony and you get on it and it's literally like sitting on a string of overcooked spaghetti. Their head goes one way, their shoulders go another way, their rib cages fall out another way and their back legs trail along somewhere behind them. So you can feel a little bit and then you, if you combine that with round and flat, you do sometimes get that sort of slippage. Um, I would, number one, obviously speak to your saddle fitter explain to them what's going on. They can do what I said here about the balance straps. They might want to add a balance strap to your saddle. They might suggest you change the way that you girth your saddle up. Um, they may suggest some kind of a different pad, like um, a gel one, but again, not on the horse's back. 
there are a few things to do. And I, but I often do say to people that if it's if the saddle is slipping, the horse is really green and really young, and really wibbly wobbly. Work is the best thing for them. Get them strengthened up so they're supporting you a little bit more. And when you turn a corner, they're turning a corner. They're not wobbling around a corner. Um, and the other thing that people can do is put the horses on a diet if they're really round and flat. But I'm not saying Haley's pony needs a diet, by the way. I don't know it. Oh, my daughter again. <laughs> Alan Eventing, what's your favourite horse breed? Hmm. For saddle fitting, I can tell you my worst horse breed, Connemara. Oh, they're a nightmare to fit saddles to quite a lot. Um, favourite horse breed, probably Highland Pony, if I'm honest. Little fat things with hairy legs. Um, Lisa, what did she say? Hi, I've got a very flat back, section D, and a fat round cob. What's the best saddle for them, please? It really depends because... Whilst this saddle here is a cob saddle, um, it won't fit all cobs. It will fit a lot of cobs, but not all cobs. And equally, it will fit horses that aren't cobs. It really depends because you can get very flat, very broad horses. So, for example, I have a Highland out there, and he's very broad, but he's actually got quite a lot of shape through his um, through his shoulder and his wither. So, if I was to put a typical like one of these cob, cob saddles on him, it would do what's called bridging. It would do this. You see that where it makes contact at the front and the back and not in the middle it would bridge because he's got quite a lot of shape whereas this particular saddle here designed for very flat 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 cobs if yours is a very flat 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 cob then something more like this ideal h and c highland and cob brilliant saddles for that type but you have to get your saddle for throughout because they vary so much and the other thing you find with the cobs as well is they're often very short backed and actually you've struggled to get a normal panel panel this is a panel so this is a normal panel here but sometimes you have to have really short panels on the cobs because they're very short backed and it depends very much at least as well on how tall you are what kind of saddle you will need etc etc if you go on the society of master saddlers website go on to like search for a member go on to saddle fitter click on your area you'll get a list of all your saddle fitters Emma Atkinson, mine goes to the right occasionally, but I'm fairly sure it's due to me. Um, oh, you've got a very cute pony. Um, yeah, it may well be due to you, but I would say it maybe isn't as much to do with you as you think, because I think it's very rare to do with the rider. I think you'd have to have one leg hanging off to make a huge um, difference. Although if that's your pony there, your pony does look quite barrel-like and quite broad, so things will slip a little bit more easily. If it is you, then if you do think that you're uneven, then it's extra specially important for you to check your stirrup leathers. Because if you are uneven, you'll be putting more pressure down one leg than the other, so your leather is more likely to stretch. So for sure, if you think it's you, check your stirrup leathers and check your stirrup leathers aren't contributing to it. And also go and see a chiropractor. You know, we spend so much money on our horses getting our horses' backs done, and sometimes we just need to go and get our own backs done because... The amount of people I see that lead their horse out all gleaming, it's had the back, it's had the massage person one week and a chiropractor the next week and the saddle fitter and the dentist and the farrier and then these owners come out with a plastic, like a, with a plastic bag inside their welly because their welly's leaking and they're dragging one leg behind them, limping along, haven't seen a chiropractor in their entire life. So it's really important as riders that you make sure that you're in a good physical health as well. Like not even just to do with saddle slippage, but to do with you know, as a rider, you're a much easier weight to bear in the saddle and you fit into the saddle so much better if you're straight and you're even and your core is good and you're sitting well. So get yourself looked after. Um, what else can I say to you, Emma? Again, speak to your saddle fitter. Um, but I would be I would be surprised if it is entirely you. If you think about it as well, what riders can do is riders themselves can contribute so say you're very wonky as a rider you might sit more heavily for example on your right seat bone and then you might then for squash the right hand panel down a little bit more and the flocking might get a little bit flatter so the flocking gets a little bit flatter and what does that do is it drops your right seat bone even more which flattens the flocking even more which drops your seat bone even more which flattens the flocking even more and then your horse then you're sitting on his back unevenly 
Is he going to carry your weight properly? No, he's going to compensate. So if you think of you're giving somebody a piggyback and they were leaning off all the time to one side, you would have to carry them differently, wouldn't you, than if they were sitting straight? So sometimes wonky riders, very wonky riders, may affect the panels on their saddle, which may affect the horse long term. So it's very important if you do think you're a wonky rider to try and get your wonkiness a little bit sorted out, a little bit less wonky. Hayley, <laughs> mine does the same, Emma. It's mainly me, but also the fact my ponies are barrel and green, so they wobbles a bit. Yeah, so if you're if you're uneven and your pony is that string of overcooked spaghetti that we were just talking about and a barrel, then it is a recipe for a little bit of slippage. But there is lots that we can do. And speak to your saddle fitter because strapping, changing the placement of your straps, um, changing your girth type. So I get a lot of really good results from, you know, like people spend a lot of time getting their saddles really broad and like, you know, covering as much of their broad ponies back as they can. And then they have these itty bitty little cotton cottage craft girths that scrunch up into like an inch wide. If you have a cottage craft girth, along with your single-sided elasticated girth or your uneven leathers, then get rid of it and treat yourself to a new one. So those cotton girths, they crunch up into almost nothing. So then you're relying on something that's like an inch underneath your pony's tummy to try and hold you securely. Whereas if you think about it, if you had a really nice, soft, nice, yummy, broad girth, so those stupid string girths are making the comeback at the moment, they're about that wide. Um, I recommend a lot the ideal F2 girths because they are really wide and they're really soft and they're a really nice sort of soft leather that gives a lot of grip. Shires and Professional Choice, so Professional Choice is an American company and Shires do a copy of their girths and they've got like a um, detachable neoprene on the bottom, that's a little bit grippy. So a bit like the gel pads, you don't want to stick something to the horse, but giving something a little bit of grip is sometimes a good idea because especially on the barrel types, all it takes is that little oh, bit of a whoop and then you're really all the way off because they're so rotund. So if you can just avoid that little first initial whoop off to the side, then it really helps. And so girths can really help with that. I hope that makes sense. Emma has an X more. My son used to have an X more cross. Best pony ever. Stupid round ponies. <laughs> uh, everyone's saying they can only see them. A horse, a horse I care for sometimes recently starts to bite her saddle as soon as she sees it. Could that be a saddle issue? Yes, it can. Um, I don't know how interested you are in my stories, but I'll give you a really quick story. I go to see a lady, a lovely lady, and she had a horse that had um, a black dressage saddle and a brown jump saddle. And every time she went near it with the black dressage saddle, it used to go mental. And every time she went near it with the brown jump saddle, it was fine. It was like the horse just knew it didn't like one saddle. So she got her previous saddle fitter out, um, who checked it, said it fits, everything was fine. So she carried on and the horse got worse and worse and worse until she got the vet out and the vet said it had a really bad back. Get your saddles checked. So the saddle fitter came back out and said, no, 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 I can't see what's wrong. It fits perfectly fine. So she thought, oh, well, so she carried on. Anyway, the horse back got really bad. Um, Saddle fitter retired. I ended up going out to her and realised that the tree was broken in the dressage saddle. Um, and it, it was broken enough that, that it's caused the horse quite a lot of discomfort and not quite enough that Saddle fitter hadn't quite noticed it. Not bad mouthing him, by the way. Um, and so she got the saddle changed and everything and got a new dressage saddle. But the horse would never let go near it with him with the black saddle. So she could only ride in brown tack because it associated the black with that story um so yes horse you care for sometimes recently started to bite her saddle as soon as she sees it um it can be it can be lots of things but it's definitely an indicator if you've got a horse that previously has been fine to tack up and suddenly shoots the back of the stable when you bring the saddle out it could be being a bit work shy or it could be it's feeling sore somewhere or it could be it saddle is causing it discomfort if your horse has previously been absolutely A-OK -okay to do the girth up, hasn't battled an eyelid, and then suddenly starts trying to take your head off when you do the girth up, it can be it's got a sore back, it can be it's got ulcers, a sore tummy, or it can be that the saddle is not fitting properly. I see a lot of people that say, my horse doesn't like being girthed up, but the saddle's fine because it's fine to be ridden. But actually, sometimes it's that initial putting on and girthing up that causes the pressure. For example, if your saddle is too wide at the front, or it's pinching at the front for whatever reason, as you do your girth up that first initial time, it will clamp down, it will pinch on the withers. And then as you're tacking up and you're doing everything else, the horse gradually gets used to that sort of feeling. So by the time you get on, 
sometimes actually it's kind of a bit numb to that feeling anyway. So I would certainly, if your horse's behavior has changed around tacking up, mounting, dismounting, tacking up, girthing up, get it checked. Again, find a saddle fitter on the Society for Master Saddlers. Um, hate, hate, Sarah Keith, hate, hate, hate one side elastic girth. Me too. Um, lots of research now available by saddle slip towards a hind end limb. Yes, and if I can try and work out how to share this thing. So the share right here is. Hang on, is it going to let me change it? Is the question. Right, so is it going to let me change it? Here is the piece of work. Yes, found it. So here is the here is the study done. So at the end of this thing, I'm going to put a link to all of this so you can click on it and download it. But this is the study done. Saddle slip is usually blamed on saddle fit, crooked riders, or horse shape, but it may reflect hind limb lameness. There's no studies on the frequency of saddle slip, blah, 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 blah. So they basically got together, and Sue Dyson, if anybody knows her, is the most well-respected vet in probably the history of the universe. Um, she's very, very, very good about lameness. Um, so they got together, and they did some stuff this is all the gump in it here but i've done like a pdf with a slightly kind of more user-friendly terminology um but yeah, this is what they did so this is all available on the internet so if you have a look on the internet or have a look at the end of this i'll put the link up on the, like the comments and i'll also put a whole new link up um as a whole post then you can have a look and you can find it if you're looking on if you're watching on youtube then I'll put in the description thing, I'll put some links. Um, and I'm also, I've am also i also done a downloadable, it's free, but a downloadable PDF about saddle slip as well, which you can click on and download, and it's all free of charge. Um, oh, hang on. Oh my gosh, there's loads of comments. Let's try and work through them. But, um, what's your views on saddle pads numbness obviously thicker ones will affect the saddle fit in general so they're better type to use so um it's a slight myth that thick ones affect saddle fit um they do they do they do a little bit but they don't as much as people think because there's a uh, they lift so as well as as well as filling in they also give lift so because they're lifting they're they're not affecting they're not narrowing it as much as people think because there's that lift involved as well um in general, they're better type to use. So number one, always use one that's shaped up into the gullet. So in here, so I always use Lemure, do really good ones. I think Weatherbeater have started doing very good ones now. Um, uh, New Med, do that nice high wither shape. So even if your horse has no wither, even if your horse is that barrel that we've just been talking about, get a high wither numner saddle cloth because it sits it right up into the gullet of the saddle and it stops it from pressing down on the withers. Thickness. It depends, ask your saddle fitter. Sometimes I will suggest that people use slightly thicker ones. Sometimes I say don't use anything other than a thin cotton one. And speaking of thin cotton, only ever use cotton ones or ones that are breathable because you don't want to make the horse sweat. And if you do use lambskin then or sheepskin, then make sure it's lambskin for slash sheepskin. None of that synthetic stuff. That is gross and it gets icky and it makes them sweat and it rubs and it's... Ugh. Don't use it. Only use the real stuff. And I know it's more expensive, but you either use it or don't use it. You know, if you, if you don't want to pay the money and get that really nice stuff, then don't. That's cool. Just use a normal cotton one. But if you do want to use fluff, please make sure it's proper real fluff. It has to have sheep involved in it. Jessica, please, any tips for sliding, slipping forwards too to tie this open until your saddle comes? Slipping forward is a really, really difficult, tricky thing to fix. And we as saddle fitters spend a really long time trying to solve saddles that move forward. It happens most in the little Welsh types with the big round barrels on the itty bitty shoulders with a really forward girth groove, shoulder that comes back because the saddle will gravitate to that narrowest point. Um, and in most cases we can solve it. In some it's just unsolvable. Sometimes you need a cropper. Um, again, this point strip is very good for that. Um, the, what the point strap does, I know it's hide your comments when you see it. What the point strap does here at the front is it anchors it down a little bit behind the shoulder, and it also means that you've got a strap slightly further forward from the other one. So if your saddle is being sucked forward, then that point strap is really useful. Um, I know it sounds like I'm just bombarding you with links, but I did do a 
if I do say so myself, I did do a really good video about cob saddles and it explains the girthing. So I'll pop a link to that as well at some point. Emma Atkinson with her lovely little Exmoor pony. Oh, she's got a little snuzzly nose. Um, this car is my last car of my pony. He's right side this weekend. That's the side my saddle slipped to. So there you go. So you see, you thought it was you, and you thought it was you, and you thought it was your round pony, but actually your pony's got a little bit more weakness down that side, and the saddle is slipping to his weaker side, which is what Sue Dyson, ah, 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 she's like the god of vets. That's what she found. Next person, Tracy, I have a temporary saddle whilst waiting for me to measure. Woo, lucky you. And it's wobbling a little bit. Someone suggested a gel pad between the pad and the saddle. Yes, yeah, so the gel pad won't necessarily stop it from wobbling completely, but it will just give that little bit of support in there. Um, if you do go for a gel pad, go for a decent quality one. So the Acabellos are good or the VIP pads I've heard are also quite good. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it won't stop slipping. It won't stop that, but what it stops, it stops a little bit of movement and it, stop, and it acts as a bit of a shock absorber so it will help hopefully um, and again I presume if you're having a made to measure saddle made lucky you then you've got a saddle fitter so just run it past them as well just in case there's a reason why they can't Michelle so you stopped the saddle on my fat back cob from slipping oh hi Michelle how's he doing I haven't seen you for ages um you stopped the saddle she's got one of these saddles in fact Oh, hi. Um, you stopped the saddle of my flat back hob from slipping with the balance strap. No problem since we've been using the one on the left to stop slip. Right. There you go. See? So, and her, in her horse's case, there was probably something, a little bit of something going on, but it wasn't bad enough. And the balance straps fit. The new saddle, actually, because the saddle she had on it wasn't helping. So she had a saddle that wasn't quite flat enough. So we've got a really nice flat saddle on him now and put the balance strap on. And oh, I'm glad it's helped. Thank you, Michelle. I love my cob saddle. I love your cob saddle too. Um, Amanda Fisher, I love my Shire's Performance Fusion saddle pad. I can feel the difference in shock absorbance. I hope you can. Certainly, if you can feel the difference, he can feel the difference. And I say to people all the time, but like when people have like really squishy saddle seats and really squishy panels underneath the shape panel again. So like when people have like when, when your seat's really soft and squishy, and when your panel is really soft and squishy, that's absorbing, like if it's feeling soft to you, it's also feeling soft to him because it's absorbing your donk, 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 like movement. So it's acting as a shock absorber. So if you can feel a difference, he can feel a difference. Well done, Amanda. Oh, what resources would you recommend for someone that lives in a place where there aren't any saddle fitters? Where do you live? Um, I recommend you come and move here. We've got loads around here, loads and loads of us. Um, I would probably message me and I'll have a look and see if I can find anyone near enough to you. I'm presuming you are not in the UK, judging by the sunlight in your picture. Um, Claire Baker, can't stress enough how amazed I am after new saddle. Previously slipping saddle, I thought he was unfit. It's always sweaty when we got home, but now he's got the new saddle, no slip and no sweat. I don't know if it's because we've gone from synthetic to leather, but I don't care because he's a happy pony. That's excellent news, Claire. Um, yeah, synthetic saddles are fabulous, but I do think they are maybe a little bit more sweaty. Um, and also horses will sweat when they're stressed. Um, horses' muscles sweat when they overuse them. So it might be that he was struggling to move quite so much in the other one, or it was stressing him out a little bit in the other one. Um, you weren't such an easy weight to bear in the other one. You know, now you've got a better fitting saddle. Hopefully that will help. How can I check on that? Because she's not my horse, but a schooling horse, and I love her, but I don't want to piss off the owners by asking. What was your question? Hang on, bear with. Hmm, I can't remember what your question was. I think it was about your ones going off. I would, I would point the owner into the direction of our Facebook page to say that you've seen this and it might be useful to watch or YouTube page. Put them in the direction of this video. Um, oh, is your one she starts biting? I remember now she starts biting the saddle. Yeah, so I would I would say, oh, I just happy to watch something on Facebook or on YouTube the other day, and this is what I found out. And do you think it might be that? Um, and I'm sure that most owners would like to would like to hear some positive feedback. Amanda, my car, my cob is currently in dressage. It's kind of muscle dressage to come back, my love. I'm looking for a dressage saddle. struggling to find anything low budget. Um, any ideas on secondhand mace to keep an eye out for? I prefer 
blocking. It very much depends because if your cob is in a Kendamazis compact, then it's not a cob, cob, cob. Um, tell you what, do come up quite a lot in brown. The ideal Jessica's, they're quite good as well on the cob types. Um, can't obviously can't recommend the saddle without seeing the horse, but um, yeah, ideal Jessica's do fit a wide range of that kind of cobbish type and maybe something that a compact would fit. And they're blocked. Um, she was fine until recently, she's a schooling horse, totally fine, fine with the bridle and everything. I'm assuming with the saddle, she raises her heads, she raises her heads and bites. Definitely have a chat with the owner and just say perhaps it's worth checking things out. Oh, um, uh, yeah, I do have a video on checking for broken trees. Um, so yeah, there is a video. Uh, Oh God, my God's like link central here. Um, so I'll pop another video because it could be something as simple as a tree's broken. So um, I'll pop the link to the broken trees as well. I'll try and remember to do that. Can you talk about how half pads help fitting the saddle, please? Ooh, half pads don't, mm. I would say that they don't help with fitting the saddle. Um, they don't, they're not as bad as we thought. So we used to think that they were really bad, half pads. Well, lots of people did. I never did. Um, just saying. But they um, they don't help with fitting the saddle as such. But I would the times I would use a half pad, and I'm going to stress again, if it's a fluffy one, only ever a lambskin or sheepskin one. Like, and again with the shape that goes up into the weather, like the Lemure ones, are very good. Um, then the only time I would personally use one is if the horse has got a lot of temporary muscle wastage along its back. And you think about when you look at the side of a horse when they've got that, it's called muscle atrophy, it's often like in almost the shape of the half pad. And in those situations, the half pad can just give that little bit of support um, between the saddle and like the, the basically the rib of the, the shelf of the rib. So that's when I would use a half pad. There's not many other times I would use a half pad. Um, sometimes you've got like a particularly bouncy, wobbly rider. Um, and they're going hunting for the day, then sometimes it can be quite a good shock absorption. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say that they help with fitting the saddle as such. Unless they've got the shims in. Some people do use the half pads with the shims in to lift the front or lift the back, if that's what you mean. Um, if you suspect your saddle may be bridging slightly, are there any pads you can temporarily use until the saddle comes to check? <laughs> well, I need my son to go. No, I don't have to change. Um, your son's going to be very annoyed when he turns on his computer and it's full of horsey videos instead of, I don't know what the boys listen to, Minecraft videos. Um, yeah, so they um, it, get, obviously get your saddle fitter out soon. So two things about bridging. That's four. Two things about bridging are, number one, sometimes bridging isn't as bad as you think it is because actually when they're stood still and you put the saddle on, you're like, ooh, is that bridging a little bit? But actually when you're on board, they kind of lift their back up. So when it bridges like this, sometimes when you get on board, their backs come up. That's obviously an exaggeration. If it looks like that, please don't put the saddle on your horse. Um, but their backs come up and they can kind of meet the saddle. So I would check your saddle after you've ridden because sometimes with bridging, we kind of, we check it afterwards because um, some horses stand still like, uh, and they let everything hang out. And then you get on board and they go ba-doing and they bring their back up. So um, I was, first of all, don't panic too much if it's only very slight. And the other thing is in terms of pads, um, I feel like I'm like an advert, advert for Lemur today. So they do, I'm sure other companies do them, but I just know the Lemur ones. They do what's called a ProTor pad, but you can get ones that just got like the four pockets in, like two at the front, two at the back. But you can get ones that have got a three on each side, like front, back and middle, in which case the middle ones be the ones you want for bridging. Um, I hope your son doesn't mind you using his account. Why is leg pulling when girthing are frowned upon now? Um, because um, the, some horses have got quite a lot of excess skin in their armpit, and as you pull their leg forward, all their skin kind of comes in front of the girth, and when you put it back, they've got all of that spare skin there that gets rubbed. It's actually been looked into a little bit, and it seems to cause more problems than it solves. So personally, if, if I had a horse with flappy, <laughs> flappy armpits, I wouldn't call them forward personally. I feel Bianca's pain. I struggle to find a saddle fitting near me too. Luckily, I've learned a lot from you. Still annoying over here to pick your brains. Oh, Nikki's a client that moved to America in the sun. 
do you think all saddle fitters will be using pressure testing pads during fitting in the not too distant future not not in the not too distant future no because the pads cost about twenty thousand pounds currently um there are cheaper ones in the market that are crap and they don't they don't work at all um and they try to market themselves properly but they don't work um I think that at some point they will become more affordable and then yes I think more saddle officers will hopefully use them um, but then equally it's very difficult because they are something that as a standalone product not actually as useful as you'd think it's a bit like people use people, people try to use a thermography in saddle fitting and that actually has been a study done on that which shows that thermography was showing the exact opposite from what was actually happening with the saddle so the, the saddles that they said didn't fit actually did fit and the ones they said did fit didn't fit so thermographies because there were there was talk about like you know should saddle fitters have to do the thermography stuff and like check the heat in the saddle and the heat on the back but actually that's been proven to be completely irrelevant in terms of saddle fit so and i think that the pressure mat stuff when done properly so Russell from Centaur Biomechanics does it, um, along with a guy called Mark Fisher, who's a saddle fitter just down the road, actually. Um, and they do loads of research, and it's amazing with pressure testing and everything like that. And But it's done in, in, in the context of this massive, massive study. It takes them days to get one small bit of data. So I think as saddle fitters, just whacking a, a, a mat on and putting it on a chicken for pressure, is that going to work? Probably not, because like I just said two seconds ago, something that bridges statically will bridge much less under saddle. Um, but maybe at some point there'll be a user-friendly one that we can all use that costs five pounds. <laughs> but then the other issue is that when it becomes too um, affordable, is that you know the general public going to use it and try to do it instead of you know with people trying to do it themselves? I don't know. But like I saw a kit for sale on. I think it was on a Facebook page the other day, and it was a saddle fitting kit, and it was a flexi curve, which by the way, don't use the flexi curve, they use because they're crap. Um, it was a flexi curve for sale, and then instructions on how to measure your horse and how to put the measurements against the saddle to see if that saddle fits. And 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 I wanted to comment on that, and I didn't, because I thought it's gonna look like I'm just being like, oh, you're gonna take my job. But it's, it's ridiculous, because I couldn't tell you if a saddle fitted by looking at a flexi curve tracing and then a saddle. You know, you'd have to see the saddle on the horse's back. You have to see the saddle under under saddle. You have to see the rider on the saddle. So I just, I think this, I think that as things start to get cheaper, maybe, well, the, mm, I just think, yeah, I don't know. But I, I hope that the pads don't get so cheap that every Tom, Dick and Harry does it and thinks that they can then do it themselves. Nikki, would you say using a half pad to help fit a saddle is a bad thing? I have a thoroughbred and a prestige, but I ride with a fluffy half pad to help the width currently. So they don't help with the width as so they, they do a little bit. They take up a little bit. Let me see this Hang on, hide your comment. They, you know, they do sort of sit in the front here. So people think that they do take up the width because they do because they sort of sit here. But they also lift. So they don't check, you know, the width is the angle here, the angle of the points. They don't change the angle of the points. They just lift them off the back. So they can help. A little bit but you're lifting the whole thing actually in terms of width if you're wanting to pad something out at the front you need something with the shims in the front really to kind of balance the front out so what's your comment again i wouldn't say it's a bad thing if you haven't got a saddle fitter and i know you struggle for a saddle fitter but it's not a bad thing but maybe you need to be thinking about the balance and the shape of the tree because the other thing is is that people talk an awful lot about the length and the width of the saddle but at but not the shape, whereas the shape of the tree is so important, you know, as important as the width and the length, if not more so. So, you know, the, a half pad won't change the shape. It will maybe help pad it out a little bit, especially if you put shims in the front, you can take up a little bit of the width. But yeah, I reckon that's all of our questions. So I'll quickly run through it again. So basically, reasons for saddle slipping, wonky horse, wonky rider, wonky leathers, check them, please. Wonky girth, one side elastic girth, go and burn yours instantly. Um, and also Grieve and Dyson from the Animal Health Trust have done a big study about it being to do with hind limb lameness. Please don't panic by the word lame. It doesn't mean horses are lame. It just means not as straight as ideally. 
Um, I'm going to put a link on here in the, so if you're on YouTube, I'll put it in the descriptions. If you're on Facebook, I'll put it in the comments. I'll also probably do a post on Facebook about it. I'll put a link to a PDF that I've done that you can download, which is free of charge, which is sort of summing up in, summing up in very kind of user-friendly language. And I'll also put a link to the less user-friendly um, thing, study, so it's dead late at night and I'm hungry. So I'll put a link to this, which is the actual study itself. Um, I'll put a link to that there as well, because that's really useful to see. And I was also going to put a link in about girthing, so cob saddles girthing and something else, but I'll remember that and I'll pop it on. So whilst it sounds like I'm just pushing a load of links on you, I hope you'll find them quite interesting and quite useful. So if you're saddle slipping, in summary, if you're saddle slipping, don't panic, but check, you know, check your leathers, check your girth hasn't got elastic on one side. You can check your panels, you know, sometimes it's a saddle itself and sometimes the panels do sort of flatten down. So, you know, the way to check your panels is to sort of literally sit it in front of you like this and look down the panels and have a look and just see if one is flatter than the other. Do they look even? Does your tree look twisted? Um, I'm going to do a whole new video on how to check your trees twisted. So like, does your tree look twisted? Does it look, you know, look down it? Does it look nice and straight? Does everything line up nicely? The chances are that it's not your saddle and it's not your legs. It's chances are it's your horse or your girth or your leathers. So check all of that and then get your saddle fitter out. And don't be surprised if your saddle fitter um, recommends a chiropractor to see your horse or even the vet. Um, it's not the end of the world. Did I mention in the study that Sue, Sue Dyson did, they, um, they pinpointed the lamest areas in all the horses and they nerve blocked them. And in all but one, so 97% of the horses, their saddles stop slipping after they've been nerve blocked on their hind end. So that just goes to show what a huge part those hind limbs play in terms of saddle slip. Um, if you think about it, if one leg is moving slightly differently than the other, you can kind of understand why saddles might wibble or wobble or slip to one side. Um, if, you know, if they're not stepping through with one as much as the other. And interestingly as well, slightly off on a tangent, um, horses that have got kind of gut discomfort, so ulcers or just like acidy tummies or just like slightly colicky, you'll often see that they're a little bit short on their right hind. Um, and that in itself can cause saddle slippage slightly to the right so there's so many things that can go on in the back end of the horse so many things that are fixable don't panic if this does go because there's loads of things that your saddle fitter can do for your saddle but again get your saddle fitter out check on the society of master saddles website go to find a member put saddle fitter in put your area in and there you go um let me just check there's no more questions for you <laughs> Thank you, very informative, from Bryony on her son's account. He wants Minecraft, he's going to get ponies. Um, thank you, thank you for watching. I hope you all have a lovely Friday night. It is now nearly nine o'clock. My Indian is due any minute. And yeah, cool. Any questions, queries, general chit chat, please comment below. Um, please ask away. If you've got any ideas for future videos, then please ask away. Um, and I'm going to do a live on the last Friday of every month. And I'm going to do a video every week as well on top of that, but not a live one. And I'll see you soon and have a lovely, fabulous weekend. And I hope it's not as ridiculously hot as it was today. And you all get to ride your ponies loads. Lots of love. Take care. See you soon.